Hello everyone. So um, I need to clear out some space on a pinning mat and I thought you know what a, a lot of people have done this already but uh, I might as well do a reassembly video <clears throat> just to show you um, how I do it you know and, um, what not to do and I've got a good example of what not to do right here. This is uh, this is my pinning mat all right. And you should not have a bunch of other springs and a bunch of other parts. You should really only have what belongs to the lock you're working on, on the on the mat, you know. So you should have all your little parts there. And if you don't have a mat, then just clear off a space in your cluttered area, like I've got right here. You know, I'm, I leave these things lying around just so they're easy to get to, but they're also easy to lose and easy to get confused. I really do need to get more organized, so... It's one of the things is make sure your area is organized. And uh, if you've got a big mat, like I see a lot of people have those sparrows mats, those really help out um, because a lot of times you'll drop a, a pin and it won't land on the mat. And if it's on something smooth like this, it'll start rolling. Also pay uh, attention to your floor down below where you're working at because that's where the pins are going to drop. And if you've got tile or concrete, good luck finding those things, man. They they haul ass and and uh, disappear under every little crevice and nook and cranny that they can find. So um, it might be a good idea to have a rubber mat or something like that, or even carpet. You know, uh, close crop carpet, if, as long as it's like a white or something like that, where your pins will stand out. If you got steel pins, you can use a magnet. It works well on springs, also. I just tie it like this little magnet right here. It's a super duper magnet. It's doing a pretty good job right there, so I might get another uh, one. But you just tie a magnet on a string and you pull it around like a little pull toy underneath your work area, and you can find all kinds of metal things that you didn't know that you couldn't find before. But anyways, you get all your stuff organized, and hopefully, when you uh, disassembled your lock before, you put your pins in the order um, of the of what you're doing and if you uh, don't have one of these uh, little uh, huck lock disassembly kits, they, they really come in handy. Uh, I use them all the time. Every time that I uh, disassemble a lock, I usually use at least one item out of there, you know. Um, but then what I do is I, I get the key and I put it in the lock. And I've got it in this little stand here. Sometimes you can get them stand up, you know, on something else, but... Uh, these little stands come in handy. And then, uh, let's make sure I'm in frame where everybody can see this. And then I find out if I put, <laughs> sometimes I start with one over here and number one over there. So uh, we're going to find out. But you can look at your key and kind of get an idea. The uh, The lowest cut in the bidding will be your uh, longest key pin driver. So you, um, I can tell that this is number one where I started. And so I'm just going to put that guy back in there. And if you've got it correct, the uh, pin will be flush well, with the core there. It won't be sticking up too high, nor will it be sticking too low. If it's sticking too low, that is also a problem. Um, because uh, you want it s smooth. And you're always looking for the pointy side down well, when you drop them in here. If you put them the other way around, the lock will work, but... Uh, It'll just be easier to pick, and uh, it'll be harder for the key to go in and out because these are tapered just to let it ride over those ridges and valleys um, that you get on the key. So I'm just sitting there, and, and these uh, Sparrow's pinning tweezers, or any, any tweezers that have a, a way of gripping a pin like that, come in really handy, especially when messing with um, pins and everything. You just got to make sure you grip them right like I didn't do on that guy and I'm trying to get this guy's orientation correct I'm trying to hurry this up all right so we've got that set up set up we've got this one set up and I want to um, pull this guy up here where you can see him let's we'll see if we can get him to focus all right so you see how everyone is is flush and smooth with sometimes your, your uh, uh, key won't be all the way in the lock and it'll they'll be sticking up a little bit just make sure it's flush when you're checking this um, but if you took the pins out before, you, you'll be able to tell which ones are, 
you know, that you messed up. One will be too high or too low. But that's good. You can also feel it, you know, with your thumb or your finger. And if it feels, you're going to still feel the cuts, you know, of the of the holes. But also, I, I, I hold my finger on the top of this when I'm pulling the key out because sometimes I can just bounce them right out, you know. And then you, you can also, this is another way once you've gutted it, you can also tell um, how deep, you know, how much you've got to pick. And these these have got a lot of room here. You don't really have any overset traps, but you've got a lot of room there to push pins up. So all these pins are definitely going to have to be picked on this lock, as, as I already know. All right, so you have your Bible over here. Um, you just want to go ahead and make sure you put all your springs back in. This is the uh, this is the one time when I uh, <clears throat> I lost uh, one of the springs. Now see this see how this kind of slides around. I don't know if you can. Sorry, I, I was out of frame. But see how this I go to pick it up. If I pick it up like this, I can get it. But if I try to grab it, the diameter of this is so small. The spring is so small that you actually need uh, like the other tweezer that you get in with that little hook set. And it's just a standard set of tweezers. And uh, you just go ahead and populate each one of your, uh, you know, little Bibles in here. Um, if you had a five-pin lock, this is, see, this is a good time when the, the core is marked to let you know where pin number one is. But uh, if, you, if you only had a five-pin lock, you would not put a spring back there in that last hole. Um, so that's where it, it gets really important, you know, to... When you got six pins, you don't have to worry. You just make sure every one of them's got a spring. Now uh, these are uh, padlock springs. They're a little bit smaller. Whoa, that one bounced. They're a little bit smaller than the uh, than the quick set and Schleg type of, uh, of springs. And uh, I lost one. I can't find it, and I didn't take my magnet off and, and go look for them, which would be a good way to find it because these are steel springs. I've got a lot of extra springs lying around, so uh, I'm just going to throw one that's a little bit bigger, but it should work. And I looked on eBay, and they, the guy's selling a package of 144 springs for $12 delivered. I don't know. That seems like a lot, and I've got a lot of springs lying around. Now, this spring right here is from a Bic lighter. And uh, normally you'd throw that away. The flint is also useful in that if you ever use a Zippo lighter, you can take the flint out of that and break it down and use it. But uh, there we go. we got all the springs in there. And you can look through if you've got these inspection holes just to make sure, you know, that you've got them all in there. So the next part is you get your follower, which this guy's too big. And uh, this one's just right. And a lot of people will sit there and uh, they will, they'll put their follower in. And you got to watch that you're not mangling springs when you do that. And we will uh, we'll populate like pin five and six. So that's uh, that's one time when you, if you've got a sequence you want on your um, particular pins. If they're all standard drivers, it doesn't matter. But in this case, the last two are spools. So we're just going to go ahead and put... Uh, a spool in, in uh, slot 5 and I push forward what I'm doing is I'm holding the back of the follower with my the, my hand here and on some of these, especially when you start getting exotic and putting stuff in here this could be pretty challenging getting this, getting these springs in here and the follower to cooperate um, but uh, this is again another one of those where the preformed uh, heads really work well, I close them together and mash down and bring the follower forward. All right, so we've got the, the back of the lock populated, chambers number six and five. So we just push the follower all the way through. Just keep in mind if you've got one of these that has a cutout, that uh, don't rotate it, you know, uh, to the right if you're using this guy as a lip, which I am. And you just go back and you gotta be careful because uh, you can start counting one, two, three, and when you see four, you don't want to go much beyond that because you'll get the other spring, the other one that you've already pinned up, and pin in chamber number five will pop up. 
So now you grab your next victim, which in this case these are all standard, so I'm just going to put it back together the way I got it. I'm not going to beef it up or anything right now, um, mainly because I need my, my surface and um, this is not the fastest uh, re reassembly in the world. Um, but, you know, you're not getting, as long as you're not a locksmith and you're getting paid by the hour and stuff, I don't know. You're doing this for fun, as long as you get it done. Uh, believe me, if you can mess this up, I've done it. I have, uh, skipped chambers. I've forgotten springs. I've forgotten, uh, drivers. Um, just all kinds of things. And it makes for a really interesting, uh, trying to recover. And see, somebody jumped up here. Yeah, see, slot number three was trying to get away with not being populated. Ooh, you know what? Now, now I think I've... See, I told you I was going to demonstrate what not to do also. And in this case, I think I have... I know I had six drivers pins over here. <clears throat> and I was putting them in. I'm Oh, there, he's caught up. See that guy? He's caught up in that little hook over there. You also want to make sure you keep track of your pins, um, because like in this case, if I if I just kept going, it's okay. You know, I've only got two pins left. Let me go on to chamber two and one. There would be no driver in slot number three, and the lock would actually still work. But if you tried to turn it, you're going to shear that spring, um, and you can eventually get it open, but it's going to feel weird. And that spring, these springs are kind of weak, but like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it back together the way I had it. All right, now I've got them all forward. Now, if you would have had anything like T-pins or anything special like that, um, we also know that this core has a little ridge back here that stuff can get trapped in. So before you put this back together, I flip it back over where the Bible. You know, when the springs or everything are up on top. If this thing's got a little hump like it does, I turn the key pins towards me so that uh, I can keep track of them. And theoretically, if I go fast enough, I should be able to do this without a, uh, a shim. So let's, let's try it and just see what happens. And see, I'm going real slow right now because I just want to guide it in. And then, zzz, oh, now see? See how that just stopped right there? Now it... You fight your way through when you do this, and uh, and and a pin can get stuck. See, like right now, he's he's past pin one and pin two, but a pin got stuck. So what we're gonna do is do it the proper way. Every time I I think about taking a shortcut, I uh, I regret it later on, and so eventually we'll learn how to do things properly. So I'm trying to dig around here. And if you don't have any core shims, you can <clears throat> get some that are somewhat more flimsy, but they'll work. Uh, you can get some out of the uh, security uh, things that are found in uh, anti-theft things that are found in various uh, items you get at stores. All right, so I have this guy shimmed. You, you want to make sure that your shim covers the top of the Bible now. I leave a little bit of that out when I'm pushing in, and sometimes your the tolerance can be pretty thick, and it's it's hard to do this, but it's going to make it so much easier. See how that goes in, and I'm not getting hung up, and I want to push it all the way to the end. All right, so now we don't need our follower anymore, and we can pull the core shim out of the way, and now all we have to do is. Put our little C-clip in. Just make sure you don't forget this part of it. C-clip or, um, you know, the little nut that you screw in on the Schlage locks. Because you'll be messing around with this and forget that you have done that. And uh, you'll wind up pulling the core out or pulling it partially out. Now, if you've done this like like I did and, and you go to put your key in, it won't it won't go in. And you'll think, oh, my gosh, you know, I've I've messed it up. no. Those pins need a, a place to go up and down, you know. This pin is actually a low-cut pin, and you're trying to put a high-cut pin in there. It has nowhere to go. So if you just turn the lock 
back to its proper position. Now all the pins line in there, and you should be able to put your key in. And if you've got it right, you can turn left and right. And this one was designed earlier where it wouldn't turn counterclockwise, but now it does. So I don't know if that was designed that way or whatever. It's got a little bit of a hang-up. Sometimes that'll mean that you didn't get your uh, your uh, key pins correctly. You might have gotten one out of sequence, you know. So I don't remember it being quite that hang up -y, but it works. Key goes in, key goes out. You would have problems if you got something wrong right here. You would have a hard time pulling that out. A C-clip, we all hate them and everything, but it gets the exact tension that you need on the core. Not too tight, not too loose. You can over tighten these guys or you can have them not tight enough so that when you the best way to test those just tighten it down a little bit and back it off and then put your key in and out and try it and see how that works you know so there we go we've got this guy uh, the core put back together um, all you do is look in your lock body here and if you're wondering which way do I do it usually a tab is on some of these so this tab is this way that tells me that the key core goes down here. I just drop it in, and then uh, I put this on here. You can do that. Um, if you've got it right and you've got it in there, there'll be enough recess. I told you. I told you we were going to demonstrate some of the things, how to do it wrong. Um, there. It's strange. It looks like that thing should go down a lot further for this tab to hit it. <clears throat> Sorry, I've never put this guy back together. See, when it sits there like that, it's perfectly fine. But we've got to have the core in there. And this is the front. Maybe he goes that way. Sorry. So, as you can see, I'm not an expert on uh, on this. And uh, on some locks, I, could, I think you can see that right there. See that little cutout? That's where the Bible, I mean, the core has to go. And now I have enough recess that I should be able to put this guy in there and push him down. But... I'm encountering difficulties. And, and what's strange is I know it came out without any banging, so I shouldn't use a hammer. Look how well it works without a core in it. All right. Right. You've got to go in like that. And I know this is the the top of it. Strange. Look at me, I'm at 18 minutes. So I better stop this one right now and try to figure that out because I didn't know it was going to be this long of a video. I'm sorry.